Hey Legionnaires and welcome back, we're here with another 12-12 AD siege for you today and today we have the Teutonic Order allying with their rival, the Grand Duchy of Lithuania in this great siege battle here, a 4v4 and we do have a good selection of factions here. We actually have a bit of a cap charge uh, going on over here as well, some French Chevaliers. Look like they're trying to chase down the Welsh general of all things as well, this could be catastrophic for the Welsh player here, if he doesn't get his general back inside in time. Maybe the cavalry will be, the French cavalry will be deterred by the towers, but seems not. It seems like they're gonna be engaged out here, and this could be catastrophic, in fact. These French Chevaliers, with a pretty decent charge off on the general, they are tier three against a tier one general. That is a big, big problem there. Looks like we have some, uh, some light shock infantry over here as well, that maybe have been outside the walls. I'm not really sure. It looks like there's bodies out here, so looks like there might have been a bit of a sally out, but I'm, um, by the looks of it, but yes, more importantly, the Welsh general is in real danger. He actually lost about half his strength before he managed to get back inside. The oil pouring down onto the general unit there, and yeah, that is not a good sign. That that is actually horrendous. It looks like the units actually. Oh, I thought it might be coming back out again. I thought it was going to try a second attempt, but yes, we have a four v four here. This siege uh, battle was done on uh, Joe Onitz. 12-12 stream a few weeks ago. Um, one of the players who took part in it did send it in to me and said it's a really good siege battle, a really grindy one. Fought over these uh, these uh, river bridges here, and it's going to be an epic one. So definitely get your drinks, get your snacks, sit back, relax, and prepare for some medieval action. It is going to be an epic one, that is for sure. But yes, yeah, so the factions that we have here today on the defense, we have Valakia. Um, someone was actually asking recently in the comments for more uh, battle replays with Valakia in. So this one, you know what? Uh, it just hits their, hits their tick list. You know, check something off there. And uh, we've got the, um, the Swiss here as well. Um, we also have um, Aragon I've seen back here somewhere. Um, there you go, the Hildargos. And we also have the Welsh, as we saw, with their general nearly being caught. So we have the Welsh. The, the Spanish or the Aragonese, uh, we have the Valachians, and we also have the, um, I've already forgotten who it was. Oh, the Swiss, that's it, the Swiss. The fake Germans. And then we have on the attack, we have the uh, Venetians, we have uh, the Teutonics, as we already saw. We have Grand Duchy of Lithuania, as we um, saw all the way on the far side there, and we also have the French. So, some pretty strong factions on the attack as well, especially France, really good. All round faction really got some good shock infantry, you know, good archers, crossbows, pole arms are pretty solid as well. If they brought the right ones, yeah, the guard of Scots, they have brought those. So yeah, they've got a really good faction really all round. Even their infantry is pretty good. They got, uh, and then we have uh, Lithuania, who's pretty good in tier one. Its other tiers not so great to be honest. I mean, he's got ducal heavy axe, but they're pretty solid, and they've got good chevrons here as well. Um, and he's brought tier three cav. And a great bombard, which I don't know how smart an idea it is really to bring a bomb, like a great bombard. I mean, they've actually knocked down some towers, which I guess is useful. Oh, we have another sally out. Vlakia again sallying out with his uh, shock infantry down here. I mean, he's a uh, light shock infantry. Probably aren't going to do much against Joan of Arc, who is arguably one of the strongest generals, maybe the strongest general in the game. Um, is a very, very scary one. I think I'm just trying to stop this levy spear from getting to the walls, slow it down. It's not really achieving a lot because. French or inside the walls. If I was the defenders, I'd be bringing up some cavalry and I'd be charging any units that just uh, dismounted off the walls because um, that's a really foolish mistake by the attackers. They haven't actually captured the gate to allow them to um, to get troops inside that way, like cavalry. So for now, if you had cavalry, you could just charge the shock infantry here and you'd have no reprisals. Like, there's nothing. And not even crossbows on the wall, which is always a, a good counter. Um... Or another way, to, best way to counter, like a cavalry potentially charging inside the walls that your troops are dismounting. Just put spears. It's a really good use for spears. Just bring them to uh, come off the wall first. Cavalry won't charge them. And, I mean, most in they can hold against most infantry. Bar shock, really. But yes, if you're enjoying Medieval 12, 12 con content and would like to see some more epic sieges and some glorious land battles, do remember to leave a like, subscribe if you're new around here, and a comment to show your support. It really does help out the channel as we work towards 9k subs. And yeah, I can't thank you guys for all your support. It's been amazing. And just, yeah, just keep it all up. But yeah, as you can see, I, I do like these uh, uniforms for the Spanish. They're like the, uh, these, well, like a, a World War II helmet, really. It looks so funny, really. Um, but apparently it must work, you know, in protecting 
protecting uh, missiles and weapons because they decided to equip their entire army like that. Got the artillery still flying on it. I think we're going for black crossbows, but I'm really not sure what it's going for. Um, there isn't really much left to destroy. They have actually this dismounted French Chevrolet, captured the gate, and then went back outside the gate. So I don't know what the plan there was. Um, we have actually got a bit of an engagement going on down here, though, and we have some peons here. Some light melee infantry, tier 2, taking on tier 1 light infantry, Spadaccini. To Venice and Aragon getting straight into the fighting. I think this is the only fighting, I mean, yeah, I mean, tears is the difference in why one side's winning and the other one's not. To be honest, it's an easy thing to do, just dismount some more troops, flying this peons here, which is, I think, why they're retreating now. They see that potentially they could get flanked by this Fanti Damar, and, or they could just put up crossbows and they would have won that fight. Uh, but we actually have Fanti Damar as well, heavy uh, melee infantry joining that fight. Looks like there's a lot of men, whether that's the towers or, like, collapsing, I'm not sure. But yeah, Venice and most of the Italian states, one of the strengths that they have um, going into tier 2 and 3 is that they have heavy melee infantry. It's a good strength that the Italian states have. Most of the factions, when they get to tier two and three, certainly in Europe and most of the other like parts of the world as well in the 12-12 mod, have just medium infantry. So you actually out armor and like a, and most infantry units. So something to know there if you're uh, picking factions in a 12-12 um, game. You probably want to go with the Italian infantry like Italians, states, if you like want to win an infantry fight. Sergeants here going in though, as you can see here, tier 3 medium melee infantry. They look sick though. But my uh, my comment still stands. I, I don't know about tier 2 heavy infantry against tier 3 mediums, that might be quite an even fight, but certainly tier 1 heavy against like tier 3 medium, you've got no chance. I, literally no chance. Oh, uh, there you go, another faction that also has Tier 2 heavy melee infantry. Lithuania, it seems. He's dismounted Pajora. I don't often see Lithuania being played, so. It's nice to see them on the battlefield and also, you know, learning little facts like that. They're also one of the lucky few that get Tier 2 heavy infantry. I imagine they get Tier 3 as well. They got light shock infantry going in there from Valakia. Looks like we've got the free company longbows here as well. They're just firing. Volley after volley looks like into uh, into the Frenchies here. You know the Welsh. They're very close to the English in uh, in likeness, so they they hate the French just as much. But they also hate the English. That's the difference as well. You got those peons. Although they might be about to come for a round two on these uh, Spadaccini here, because I mean he has got all of his infantry here, his Venice off the wall, and he's just set it up back here, so he's not threatening them with that flank again, but it looks like the Samlanders might be about to do just that, and yep, here we go, another melee fight about to take place here, between the Spadaccini and the Peones. In they go. Start, start stabbing each other up, boys, guy there getting decapitated, RIP to him. I don't know really like what would persuade you as Venice to fight for your country. I mean, you're like traders, really. I guess money. I guess it's like most things, it's money, not patriotism. Because I mean, they're like like a Doge. They're sort of like a. They're not really a dictate like a democracy, but they're not really like a, a monarchy either. Obviously, it's kind of a funny one. I guess maybe maybe just hide a lot of mercs. But the Fancy Demar going in here against uh, Mercuria and uh, Mercuria. Mercuria is definitely not here. Um, sergeants and um, these Valachian shock infantry. Which I was about to call Mercuria, but that's a whole faction that's based in Africa in this game. But yeah, lots of Fanti Damar going in, actually. Their bright shields glistening in the sun. Not going to pull through, are they? Uh, it doesn't look like they are. They're just, maybe they were going after the other unit. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The Fanti Damar, I think, got the order to attack this unit, so they're just chasing them. They might have lost a few men pulling out of one combat and going into another, but I don't know. This light shock infantry, I can't imagine. Certainly when he doesn't get a charge off, cannot be doing that well against this Fanti Damar. That is for sure. I imagine they will probably start to lose that. They definitely don't have great melee defense. Both sides over here losing. Dismounted Hospitalers, um, I mean, are now just losing on their own. 
It's Desmond Bajora here, carving through them like a hot knife through butter. These Holy Order troops weirdly fighting for the Welsh. One of the things that they need to sort out, minor factions in this, like certainly the Christian ones have like Hospitalis, Templars for their roster, like Scotland and Wales, Wales have them. They need to just get rid of them. They don't need, to, like they shouldn't be there. Like the Papacy and the um, the Crusader nations should have them, but that's about it. Even the Papacy, I'm not a big fan of them really having them. Because it just makes the, the Papacy roster like far too well-rounded. Spears here, these are Swiss Spears, I think, these light uh, Landstrom Spearmen here, holding back the French. Look like they do a decent job. The Tier 3 are going up against Tier 3, so they should hold for a while, but they are light, light Spears, so as that battle goes on, they are probably going to die. We have got more Shock Infantry in here. This is a fresh Shock Infantry going in against the Fanta Damar. They pulled out one, which is definitely losing a lot of men. Black here, I imagine, has gone with a uh, large army, but quite cheap, quite light armoured. I looks like they have got some pretty good units. Um, they have like hybrid units like halberds and archers, which is like, literally a halberd archer hybrid. It's back here. If you, it's a Voynich, um, Voynich. Uh, what's it called? Archer spearman. It's just what it says in the. Just what it says on the uh, label. Really, it's an archer and a spear unit. It's pretty useful, and it's not really spear. It's more halberd, really. Uh, Fancy Demar are losing though. I wonder if this is because of this flanking charge here, where this actually kind of works in their favour. Um, the spears here for the Swiss are also losing, uh, so they should break through there. Will the French pretty quickly? One thing I have realised: oh, they brought mercenary. I've never seen that unit before. Mercenary Ushkaniki. They look like Vikings. They generally do. I mean, they just look like Slavic troops as well, maybe. But never seen that unit brought before, is it? It's just a medium melee, okay. That's probably why you would, I've never seen it brought, because it's, there's probably better options. But yeah, attackers shouldn't really be bobbing up, um, because you're just tiring out an extra unit, and I think the sergeants alone would have been enough to break through this unit. I don't think the mercenary at Ushaniki would have, they're tier one, but yeah, the sergeants alone could have broken through that fight. You don't want to blob up where unnecessary, because the archers will punish you in 12-12. But yeah, Bajora nearly through here against those Hospitalis. I think they might have just broken through just then, actually. And there you go, yeah. Dismounted uh, Hospitalis dealt with. And then, what do we have over here? Fanti de Mar uh, going in. They're cycling out. They actually are struggling a little bit. They're taking a lot of losses. There's a lot of banged up units of Fanti de Mar. I've not seen many fresh ones. I imagine there's some on the walls, maybe. I imagine Venice has just spammed these guys out, to be honest. Yep, I think this is more here. We've got crossbows coming up off the wall for the Teutonic. That's not a smart idea, really. And he's got his Samlander swords now in here. Um, the Teutonic Order, you know, quite a famed uh, Holy Order. Not got great infantry, though. It's known for its cavalry. So in a siege, could be quite interesting to see what they actually uh, do here. The Samlanders are okay, but they're still pretty awful. They're, uh, oh, they're fighting sergeants now. They've moved on from the peons of uh, Aragon. So they're fighting the sergeants. Uh, that'll, that'll, that might be an even fight. Who knows? They are actually kind of moving quite close to this first uh, river crossing here, which is, I guess, you know, the defenders are going to hold this half of the city a bit more than they're going to hold this, fur this first half, which, fair enough, but, I mean, I'm going to certainly try to hold the walls. I feel like holding the walls in 12 12 always a great strategy. Um, just do quite a lot of damage. Oh, they're actually trying to get a flank off here with his black in shock infantry. Um, and old David Warriors here also losing to these dismounted Bajora. This is what happens when you use tier 2 against tier 1. You're just going to carve through stuff. Certainly swords against swords. Also, old David Warriors play trash. But there they go. The shock infantry ran away. They, uh, they died. Oh, this was a healthy unit. I thought it was the same one. I was like, wow. They actually took no casualties against the, uh, the Hospitalis. But they took a fair amount. Big thing as well that the defenders need to keep an eye on is their ammo. I mean, they still look like they've used a, they've used a decent amount, but not too much. And uh, 
The big thing now is that crossbows as well can arc in 12-12, so it makes them a bit more useful in Siege Battle on the defense, as well as on the attack, to be fair, as well. Um, which is a shame, because bows are kind of going out of favor a bit. But we've got free company bowmen back here for the, uh, for the Welsh. They've got some more of those. We have got gunners as well. We've got some... Uh, Got some tier 3 Aragonese gunners there. That's good to see. They might be useful for morale. Obviously, we have the Archer Spearman. That's going to be very useful as well. So, they've got a good selection of uh, missiles if they need to use them. I don't actually... Oh, there are some gunners. It uh, looks like the Venetians. I was about to call them the Genoese. The Venetians have brought some gunners. And also, looks like the uh, Teutonic Order has as well. I imagine some other factions might have. The French have as well, yes. So good to see, good to see. Ah, oh, this might be why the Bajorans are doing so well. They've got red new archers up here on this wall. You can't really see, can't really see from this angle, but they are firing flanking shots into just about everything over here. I mean, right now hitting these light crossbow infantry, which is a good target. They are light, um, but yeah, that's probably why they're doing so much damage to these Moldavian warriors. They're probably putting some flanking shots into them. I mean, if not, it is just probably because the Bajora are just so much better. Well, David Warriors are hit. They look like they are going to be beaten back. And some Welsh longbows are going to get sent in. I don't know if they have... Ammo, like some power arrows. I guess that's not a thing. I forget that's not a thing in 1212. So once you're out of ammo, that is it. Uh, Sergeant's there for Aragon as well, getting surrounded, it looks like, by a mix of levy spears and cav and swords from all three factions, from three of the factions there. Yeah, Teutonics, French, and also the Lithuanians combining there. And now they are ready to assault this bridge on this side, and they are near enough ready to do the same on the other side as well so yeah both sides um, of the uh, assault attacking pretty much simultaneously in time with each other pretty well organized a good start um, the attackers did start with 8,000 men they've lost about 700 and the defenders started with 7,600 and have lost about 1,600 so taking a lot more losses for what they've inflicted but I imagine the next line of defense could be pretty grindy for the, for the, uh, the attackers. Power. I imagine they're going to lose a lot here. But we'll see. We've got some uh, archers there. Just, I guess he forgot about they must have rallied or something. Getting slapped up. And yep. Once they're uh, dealt with, I imagine... The assault will begin. So Moldavian warriors rallied. Uh, I imagine they're not going to really do a lot. But hey-ho. Who knows. Spears over here just standing off waiting. L two light spear units. I imagine they'll just send in a sword unit or something. The Fanti Damar look like they're eager to go in. Looks like actually we're going to have multiple units going in. Like I said, you need to be careful of blobbing. And you can see the hail of archers firing down. Well... Yeah, there's, I mean, there's a fair few. Looks like both sides are kind of just trying to take out each other's uh, range units. These uh, light crossbows up here really need to get back. They're just getting shot at. They're not doing a lot there. There we go. Yeah, Fancy Demand now battling away on the front lines here with the light spears. And the Swiss will hold firm. For now, at least. But they are already tier one, so who knows. But yeah, a big blob of uh, like infantry here for... The attackers, this is asking to be hit by uh, by archers. I'm surprised that the defenders didn't bring anything like a mortar or something because mortars are very, very effective. There's actually a halberd unit back here as well that's got really banged up. Already lost 30 men. So, and yeah, that's an expensive halberd. So, uh, they need to keep that protected. They've got some more as well. Uh, more halberds as well scattered about. But yeah, I'm surprised they didn't bring a mortar because mortars can get like three, 400 kills. There's certainly big, big blob ups of infantry happening in this game, the uh, mortars would really excel. There you go. Looks like that Bajora there has dealt with the uh, Moldavian warriors. And now they'll move on to these uh, these spears here, these Landstrom spears, which are getting shot at by the uh, red and new archers over there. We've also got some Mosneni, some Valachian 
sword infantry moving up. And here we go, the Bajora going in. But not slowing down. And the grind for these bridges is going to begin. Both sides is going to be pooling one or two units into this fight. I don't know whether the defenders need to just retreat a little bit, maybe hold a little bit further back because their enemy archers are still getting flanking shots at the moment uh, on those Landstrom Spears. It doesn't seem like it's affecting them too much. It's not a, like a direct flank, but it is a little bit of a flank. Spears on this side over here, getting pushed back by the Phantom Damar. These angry men here, these angry Italians bashing at the doors, trying to get through. Yeah, the spears will hold there. It looks like they're bringing up more... Oh, they look like they're going to bring up more troops. The Hildargos were going to come up, but they've changed their mind. We're now going to have uh, a defense at the bottom of the bridge. Might be a better spot for them. I don't know. Might be protected a little bit more by these buildings. Something also, if I was the attackers, I'd try to do, try to do right now is uh, with any artillery ammo remaining, I don't know if they have any, to be honest. They did have, like, obviously that great bombard we saw. Yep, there's one still over there. Just try and hit buildings. See if you can destroy and set alight the build, like the um, the city a little bit. I don't know if it will really work, um, but it's worth a try. It's certainly because that will help massively with morale. Oh yeah, look at this. There's Mosneni here. Getting focused down, I feel like, by these retinue uh, archers here. Really doing a lot of damage. So yeah, Lithuania making a good amount of progress here. There you go. Yeah, but if yes, if you want to send in some of your own 1212 AD replays and you don't know where to send them into, best place to send them in is to my Discord. The link is down below in the description. You're more than welcome to uh, send in your own replays or just join if you want to get involved in some 1212 or Total War battles. Uh, we are more than welcome to have you guys, whether you're a new recruit or whether you're a grizzled veteran. Um, happy to have you join and get involved in some epic battles. We do quite a lot of like uh, historical scenarios on the uh, on the server. It's always quite fun to try and recreate. Malicious spears here. Looks like they're going to be the next line of defense once those Mosenia are broken through. The name Militia would isn't really inspiring me. And look, they're even dying. Like these are frontal archer archer volleys here. They're dying pretty quickly. Like while we've been here, they've lost ten men. These archer volleys. Yeah, they're just going to charge in. I mean, the rest of your archers are nearly out of ammo, but I'd be interested to see how many kills those guys have got. And I imagine they're pretty decent in melee. They have got a, a shield on their back. And I imagine they go into battle with a sword, so turn into sort of a, like a hybrid infantry unit. Pretty solid they could be. We got, it looks like Halbo's coming up now. First Halbo going in. Don't know if they actually went up in like their phalanx formation. But yeah, the Teutonic Order now setting up for Halbo unit. These guys are now going to attract a lot of archer fire from the defenders here. With li little or no missile block chance, the halberds here are kind of easy to just focus down. So the militia spears might be able to hold against something. But we'll see. Yeah, I don't know. They're actually wavering and nearly dead themselves. My gosh, these guys are... Well, they are militia spears, I guess, from Blackie. They are pretty damn trash. They're literally fighting in, like, sheepskin coats against armored spearmen. Uh, what are we setting up now? Mo more Mosnani. So it looks like Valaki are really taking responsibility for that flank there. Uh, the Swiss did get pushed back on this side. And the new defense is made up of those Hospitaller knights that we saw earlier. They're defending against the Samlanders of the Teutonics, and they are. Well, the Samlanders are getting focused down. The battle that I'm now currently having is with the camera, because trying to get, like, a, a decent angle... And here with the uh, the buildings on either side is a bit of a nightmare. We've got Fanti Damar as well in here as well. These guys are clashing with those Hospitalers. 
Fantasy Command must have got a decent amount of kills. They've been in the fight since the very beginning. I mean, there will be healthier units that have gone in now, but I don't know. It doesn't look like they've lost any just yet. Like, that one's down 52 men. We've got more spears coming up. It looks like the Swiss aren't giving up on this choke point just yet either. Neither of the uh, Aragonese has got some Hildargos ready. Big columns as well of uh, dismounted Ritterbruder, I imagine these are. No, dismounted uh, Heavy Axemen here. Well, they're obviously dismounted. They're Heavy Axemen. But yeah, these are just Tier 2 stuff. They're pretty solid. Um, they're mediums, I think. So, they, oh, well, actually, they're down as heavies, but... They don't look like they should be heavy. They've only got, like, padded jerkins on. But yeah, they're good. they'll lose some damage, I guess. Surprised we didn't see, like, dismounted Ritterbruder or something like that going in. I don't know if they got any. Doesn't look like it. Lots of cav that I don't know if it's actually going to get any uh, use out of it now. We've got a lot of French Chevaliers, Cossack cavalry as well. Yeah. Don't know if we're going to see much use for it, but who knows? There is a flank Enemy looking like it could be happening over here as well. Battle. We'll keep an eye on it. Some Mercery Hussars. We'll also have Vlad over here for Vlachia. Um, he may Ow. try and go for flank. He is, well, his general is uh, heavy cav, but this is light shock. He could maybe get that round and try and flank and go hit some of the units that are remaining outside the walls but to be honest there isn't many options that they have going on most of the army now for the attackers is inside the walls and they're bringing what remains inside as well as french chevaliers going in steadily got some sergeant to arms guard of scots yeah not much to hit really a lot of wavering though going on this wall uh, on this uh, river now this wall it's a wall for the river i guess a lot of yeah well, a lot of wavering going on this bridge Oh, yeah. I mean, the archer fire coming in is pretty brutal. It looks like these Pion Ballisters here doing a lot of damage. And those uh, halberds, they've made some ground. They're actually off the bridge on this side. And we have the uh, heavy axemen as well from Lithuania down here. So he's sending in the, the heavy hitters. The guys that look like Vikings. They are literal Vikings, really. It looks like they're trying to form like a, uh, an L shape here of the defenders so they can get flanking shots constantly into the side of uh, the attackers. It's not a bad idea. And the most any here just seem like they're getting outmatched in most fights. I don't know if they just retreated here, but yeah, I mean, they're not the greatest of infantry. The Blackie's a tough faction to play. Jukal Heavy Axemen, though, they are losing decisively, and the Halberds are getting focused down. They need to bring up some. Um, Get some more troops ready to go. So this Ducal Heavy Axeman just getting flanked on two enemy. sides right now. It's a good strategy here by the defenders. I think these Voynich uh, Archer Spears are firing as well. Yep. Watch them fire. It's such a bizarre unit. It's such an awesome unit, unit as well. It can, if you bring like multiple of these units and have them like in a... And a choke point. There you go. It's such a pain. Like archers and then you just like, they turn to halberds. It can be a real pain in both land battles and just, yeah. Just about anything. Any sort of scenario, these guys are a pain really to take, get rid of. You can't re rear charge them or even charge them. They'll get their spears out. Certainly not with cavalry anyway. Shock infantry is probably a good way to counter them. Eh, maybe not even because they're halberds. So you need other halberds. But then they'll just shoot those halberds that you're bringing up to counter you. So yeah, they're, they're a real they're a real problem, really. Um, the shock infantry over here did retreat. I did see it uh, run with its tail between its legs back to the uh, the back of the uh, the formation by the seams of it. Jeez. They might need to go back in, those guys. So uh, I, would have, I would send those back in before I send any fresh stuff in, really. We have got some Samlanders that have now moved upon the side. So yeah, the Teutonics and uh, Lithuania working side by side and after years of hating each other. They clearly hate the Vlachians more. And this weird... Weird world the siege is set in. Yeah, the swords just keep chipping away at these modes then. It'll be fine. Yeah, but really, they need to bring, like I said, bring up a second unit to engage the second most enemy here. Not a halberd unit, though. They're, they're just getting focused down. But to be honest, at least the defenders are wasting ammo on this 27-man halberd unit. That could probably be routed by the most enemy alone. 
Looks like the um, the defenders sort of regain some ground at the foot of the bridge here. These dismounted hospitalers pushing back the attackers here. A lot of Phantom Damar have routed. But looks like there was a lot of mass routing going on this side. But you can see that now that the uh, the Teutonics are setting up fresh troops, some more Samlanders. There's still a lot of time left in this uh, this game, and there's still a lot of men to be killed off. 6,000 now against 4,500. The defenders are still quite a bit behind. The balance power also shows that as well. They really need to somehow find a way that they're going to turn this around. Oof, that's not good to see. A Voynich Archer speed down to uh, 35 men. I don't know if this has been in combat, but has it been just shot at a lot over here? No, that looks like the Welsh have been shot. I don't know. I do not know. I, I don't know if their missile blocks pretty is, is any good actually. These guys. That's a, probably a good way to counter them. Just shoot them. Shock infantry coming in though. We've got more Teutonics now being thrown into this fight down here. They keep cycling out fre like troops for fresh troops. We want to get what, like the best charge bonus they can. To be honest, just send some boys in and just leave them in there to fight it out. They'll grind their way through these most any eventually. It's absolute grind is this uh, this siege it really is. Samlanders, they need to break through. I mean, if they break through, though, what's what's next to come up? Oh, shock infantry from the Swiss. Arguably some of the best shock infantry in the game the Swiss have. It looks like they're going to go in. I mean, I wouldn't have sent them in yet. I don't think the most any really a need, but hey, the Swiss are going to go in. Then go these heavily armoured swordsmen that will just start taking heads. Maybe it's a way to force back the, uh, the shock infantry of the Teutonics. I don't know. absolute grind. It's really hard to tell who's who really actually. I mean the Teutonics are kind of easy to tell. They're all in white. Slowly going red though as they're covered in the blood of their comrades and their enemies. Oh. There you go. A pain with the camera. There's a whole building there just behind me. Looks like the uh, attackers again have regained ground and got off this uh, uh, got off the bridge. Just about the Hildargos here. Need some support. They are about to be broken. Why is there not like a hospital or something coming up? Or maybe, have they, maybe have they given up on this next line of defense? Shock infantry here waiting. Escadors, they could do with going in maybe. They're just getting shot at over here. Yeah, getting focused down. What are they getting shot by? Crossbows as well. Ballastari, like these are really good crossbows. Um, so yeah, that's a big loss there if he just stands there. There's Escadors and gets shot to pieces. Doesn't look like they're breaking through here anytime soon. Ah, oh, the... Uh, are the Lithuanians and the Teutonics. But on the other side, it seems like they are going to make make their way through. The Venetians here are being beaten ba uh, beating back the uh, the Spanish. But we have got crosswords up as well here. Landstrom here. They're just, I guess, shooting stuff down. But there you go. They're off the walls. Oh, off the bridge, sorry. Fancy tomorrow. They're going to make it through. Now, the attackers need to just pour troops across and they can just counter this. But yeah, this Escador here. Oh my gosh, down to 85 men. That was 120 something when we last checked on it. Yeah, they need to move that. That's that unit's otherwise just gonna be wasted. It could be a big win here for the attackers. If they get more troops across, get a bridgehead. And it's gonna make the siege battle a whole lot easier. Again, the Fanta Damara have been fighting these Hospitalers, and each time the Hospitalers have been beaten back. Like, Tier 1 Heavy Infantry just not good enough to stop the, uh, well, later tiers. And there you go, Heavy Axemen now across. So there's a bit of a bridgehead, and the settlement is on fire. Uh, there is 1% damage. I don't know what that's from. Um, but that's a good sign for the attackers, um, because hopefully that fire will spread. And it will start to set more of it alight. That will also do a lot of damage to morale for the defenders. I don't know what it has to get to like for like minus one morale, but 
even like minus one morale could be huge. Certainly late game. The Swiss shock injury here is actually decapitating Lithuanians quite literally, left, right, and center. These guys just don't mess around. Retinue your archers in here without ammo. They do go in with a, a sword and shield though, so they are pretty, pretty capable unit. They actually look like um, Warhammer Empire troops to the uh, to the Swiss infantry. Like this guy here, especially. Like he reeks of like out of straight out of the Empire in Warhammer. It's kind of cool. Maybe that's where they got the inspired look, uh, Warhammer. I don't know. Shock infantry over here, though, is losing these uh, heavy infantry here, or these heavy axe infantry. They're being pushed back. The men are running. But then we are going to see now Lithuanians and Fanti Tamar. They're going to probably come across here and try and just set up and have more reserves on that side. These Eskidors really need to go in, just charge in. And you might be able to get some kills. There's gunners now set up here as well. My gosh. I don't think the gunners are that effective in this range. But it doesn't really matter. They just need to scare the unit. And they're doing minus 13 morale with guns. It's, like, guns are very good for that job. They're not good for um, necessarily killing men. But they're good at scaring men off. And it looks like the defenders are going to have to retreat. I mean, this, they're doing so well at this bridge here. But they're going to have to retreat because the other bridge has fallen. Men flee the field of battle. This is a and now it's on to the next state. level of defense. I mean, how many men have the uh, defenders got left? 3,800 uh, 3, have the defenders got left. The attackers are 5,500. It's doable, but uh, they're going to need a bit of a miracle and also maybe like a couple of general kills on the uh, on the defenders. We have got a general speaking of down here and he's about to charge in. This is Vlad himself charging into Fanti Damar. Shield wall on none. That is a pretty good charge there by Vlad. He's probably going to do a lot of damage, but he is also in range of all of those gunners and crossbows there from Venice. And yeah, he didn't seem like they got any... I don't know. They might have got a kill or two, but not like much damage done to Vlad there. So... Was it worth it? I don't know. It only killed like 20 Fanti Damar. A heavy infantry also a pretty, well, a little bit better is soaking up a uh, cav charge. Certainly in a shield wall. So yeah, Venice, a really good faction, really. Venice, Genoa, any of the, Milan, any of the uh, Italian states, pretty solid. But yeah, we've got the Escadors here. They're engaged with those uh, Fanti Damar. I imagine the, uh, the Fanti Damar will win that one. There you go. They've already kicked them back. Our men run from the enemy. This is shameful. What we got in here? Dismounted Templar Knights now going in. Why are these guys? Why are these guys still fighting here? Why are the Welsh just persistent to fight for this bridge? The other bridge is lost. The flank will be turned. Also, I mean, we already know how this is going to go. They look awesome through the Dismounted Templar Knights, Tier 1. But they're just not good enough to stop Tier 3 stuff. They will probably get beaten back. I think there's just some idea that, like, the most expensive unit, which is often the Tier 1 Heavy Infantry, people just think it's the best infantry for the job. Um, it really isn't. You need to bring the right tiers, like the, um, the correct tiers. And you can see here, French Chevaliers, they're about to go in. On these uh, dismounted hospital knights. What is this Welsh player doing? He's just ignoring uh, the immediate threat that there is to his flank. The shock Madrid, not a bad charge uh, to take, to be honest. The Chevaliers really didn't get a great charge off. The hospitalers could probably get some kills as they retreat. We've got heavy axes, though. Yeah, there you go. Chevaliers starting to die. Uh, heavy axes, though, now coming in. So those uh, hospital knights are going to be needed in that shock versus shock fight there. Yeah, I don't know why they're holding like in this defensive line now because this requires more and more men which the defenders don't have all game and you can see there yeah heavy axe is actually instantly defeating the hildargos these guys getting out of here the hildargos really should have held the line they're gonna have to sacrifice themselves because here come the chevaliers of france again coming in smashing through these spanish infantry and there's a voinic archer spear unit there that just, just got obliterated Please, just get the hospitalers back. You can. You can probably get them back. Unless he's going to try... He probably thinks he can keep countercharging these French Chevaliers. Got Mercenary Hussars over here coming in as well. They are light shock cav. Probably not going to do much against the heavy shock cav of France. But you know what? You better use them now to try and slow down the cavalry. 
of France than at any other point. They've kind of run out of any opportunities to use their cavalry. I feel like, like I said, they should have used them way at the start when they were landing troops on, um, like, off the walls for the attackers. Best point to use them. We've got dismounted hospital and knights. They're trying to chase these fancy Damar, I think, or something, but... They just need to be careful they don't pull through accidentally. Heavy axemen here look like they're going to get routed, but it's been a brutal fight for this, uh, for this trick. Look at the bodies. There is literally, like, a carpet of bodies from the bridge all the way up to here. Hundreds of men died for very little ground. Incredible. Yeah, the bodies here. Absolute carpet. Same really over here. I mean, not as doesn't feel like it's as bad on this side here. I mean, they're holding now the Welsh. In fairness, I don't know how, but they are holding. And we've got a rear charge there from the Mercenary Hussars. Really nice into the back of those Fanti Damar there. That might actually... Um, I don't know if it'll break them, but it could do a lot of damage. Actually, it might. Look at that wavering. Another charge like that from the Hussars. Even though they're a light shot cap, might just do it. The Fanti Damar here needs to be, uh, be careful. But there you go. In they go again. And the shock infantry in there as well, taking a big old charge in the back. That's a really nice charge from the Hussars. Don't know how many kills they're going to get, but you know what? Might be worth it. At the end of the day, oh, they're getting shot down now, though. There you go. They broke the Phantom Damar, at least. That's something. And the Hussars themselves have also broken as a uh, reserve Venetian sword comes up another Phantom Damar. Oh, gunners, gunners, gunners. Be careful. These gunners here, just shooting the backs of their own men. And you can see here, look. Gun morale, minus 13. Like, it does, yeah, it does damage the morale of the attackers. Also will damage the morale of you if you're shooting at them. He might be better actually putting up his gunners, going up this wall here. And then going along to the side over here, using his gunners and hitting troops uh, across on the bridge. Uh, setting up there. That would be a good position, I personally think. That would be a better spot. Even with his crossbows up there would be a good spot as well. Yeah, the, uh, the Templars are holding there for now. Seems like the next place they're going to get broken through is here with the Moldavian warriors. They are sending up archer spears, it seems like. They need to get into their phalanx formation. And they might be able to help push back these, these shock infantry, we'll see. Big push on this side by the defenders, though, as they are really desperately trying to stop the attackers from uh, getting across here. What are we actually seeing here? Lithuanian axemen going in, so just a, a pretty trash infantry unit going in. They've got Javis, but uh, I don't think they're going to be able to stop the might of the Swiss Shock Infantry, who are again back in the front lines. Yeah, I mean, they're high period of this. They're still not going to stop these guys. Gunners again, they need to be careful. They're firing into the backs of their men. Actually, I don't know. They might be killing their own Lithuanians. Might not be, but they're not doing any morale damage to them, so that's something at least. They might break a few of these units here. Yeah, those, those archers broke there. I don't know whether that was their aim. What they really were aiming for, to be honest. Yeah, look at this. Big push. And look at that. Fancy Demar now about to get flanked by the Hospitals. Like, the defenders, I felt like, had made a mistake in, uh, in their decision of trying to hold on in this, uh, trying to hold on and fight back for that other bridge. But it might just have worked. They killed a lot of attackers off. It has cost them a bit, though, themselves. 4,400 against 2,800. Yeah, it still costs them a fair amount of men to try and uh, to try and push them back. I mean, at least they've um, retaken this sort of, like, street here. And yeah, they are just really ho holding now, like, at the bridge again. The Lithuanians are about to break, and once they break through those, they are able to just charge these gunners. So the gunners really need to think about retreating because uh, there's not much to stop uh, these Lithuanians from breaking now. What have we got here? We just got the uh, the general for the Swiss moving up, it looks like. Plenty more swords now being moved up here from the defenders. It really is going to be a grind for this bridge. They're running out of um, infantry, are the attackers, I've realized. Not like immediately, but there isn't many swords left, that's for sure. The Fanti Jamar pool is running out. We're seeing noble swords going in. That's a good unit. They have javis. So you probably want to use them before they go in. Um, but they've got lots of shock left. Oh, still got a sergeant at arms over here. That's still to come in. Plenty of gunners and crossbows. Again, I don't know why they don't just go to back to putting a unit up here. Try and just shoot across, maybe. Maybe they're not in range. It's potential. 
They've got a uh, crossbows on this side here. Mercy Bohemian crossbows over here. They're doing some damage. They are struggling with that line of sight, though. You, they can just about see the tops of heads of stuff fighting over here. And yeah, the Fanji Demar coming in now is helping to clear out some of these defenders that were on the brink of retreating anyway. Yeah, the Fanji Demar battling away to get to the front lines. And it's the same. Why do they always seem to be fighting Hospitaller Knights when I come over here? Got some archers going in as well that must have rallied. We'll run out of ammo, one or the other. Got some very gorgeous colours though of the uh, Venetians. The blue, red and yellow, looking awesome. We've got Cavalry coming forward. I don't know why Vlad's coming forward again. There isn't really any charges he's got to offer. He's just going to rear charge his own men. Uh, it doesn't do anything. If anything, it just causes problems for you. No, Vlad is off over here. It's because he's retreating a little bit. Vlaki is retreating, so maybe he's uh, trying to tie in his retreat with a charge with Vlad. Or not. No, he's going to the side of the um, Banshee Damar over here. Okay. I mean, I don't know if that really worked. I feel like Vlad just didn't really achieve a lot there. No, these Phantom Tamar are still 140 odd men. They're still, still doing well. Vlad lost a fair few troops actually on the retreat there from uh, Archer Fire and also just like we're pulling out of combat. Looks like, yeah, the Phantom Tamar, I mean, now you'd get a good charge if, you, if you'd been patient. Like, they just could get a nice rear charge there. But uh, not to be. And it looks like the bridge is going to be lost again here. What a struggle for these bridges. It really has been. A battle of the bridges. And yeah, there you go. I think now, surely, the defenders are going to have to give up this bridge. They're not going to try and send more down. Well, Vlad is actually going for another lap, he is. I think he might be going to go and try again with the... Uh, the thing is, it's swords, so they, <laughs> they really are pretty good at being killed by cavalry, that's for sure. Um, the shock infantry here for the Swiss needs to really engage that Fanti Damar. Give Vlad to do a charge onto the Samlanders. There's hope. There's hope then. Or we can see the Swiss general come up. He might go for a charge. Also, a lot of wavering now going on on this side for the defenders, but these have also sent up plenty of new fresh troops here, including a new fresh Templar. My gosh. Yeah, the Swiss look like they're setting up some infantry to maybe go for these Samlanders, who are now just isolating themselves, making it really easy for a charge here, to be honest. Oh, yeah, this is going to be painful. Here we go. Swiss general coming in. There's nothing much that the Teutonic Order can do except pray that he gets a terrible charge, which was never going to happen. There you go, the Swiss general just plows through the, the infantry there. Now he just needs to rain hellfire onto this general. But yeah, the Samander's there, going to get broken. That was a fresh unit as well. Wiped off the face of the earth. And there you go. Are the defenders now going to just play for, uh, play for time? Play for trying to just, like... I don't think that the uh, the attack is going to break through in time. Uh, if it's a 60 minute timer, then I imagine that the uh, that the attack is up to try and break through in 60 minutes. It's going to be a crazy siege. It's been a, it has been a crazy siege anyway. The battle for the bridge, though, I mean, really has been. Back and forth. Also, it looks like they're going to retake him again, like retake the uh, the choke point. The cross was here in danger, getting charged by Hospitaller Knights. And they come. This bridge has been back and forth, back and forth. It really has. Yeah, the Fanta Damar here getting flanked. They'll probably get routed. Are they going to send pikes across next? Swiss um, pikemen fighting for the Venetians against the Swiss. How dare they fight their kinsmen? Have these gunners over here. I think they're dueling with the uh, the gunners of the Aragonese, but I'm not really sure. Lithuania on this side is joined with, uh, looks like, with the French and throwing in what they have. Noble swords, mounted chevaliers as well in here. Just they're all getting thrown in to try and break through now.
Maybe they can do it. I don't know. It's a brutal volley from the uh, from the gunners there. Oh, they need to be careful. There's a general Vlad charging on through again. Again, though, you need to be careful you don't just damage your own morale. It seems like they're doing mostly damage to the the, uh, the attackers' attack morale, least. which is good to see. But we'll see. And look at this. Destroyed. The Swiss pikes have arrived. So the bridge is, I'd say, officially in attackers' hands. Well, actually, I don't know. It's, it's, it's in no one's hands, really, because both attackers and defenders are basically on it. Look at the bodies. I mean, this is... I mean, if I was the defenders now, you're just setting up some gunners or some, like, crossbows. You're going to just shoot these guys to pieces. We are seeing shock infantry coming up from the French. So they're not wanting to slow down. They're going to send in their uh, shock against the uh, the Hospitaller Knights. There actually isn't any uh, crossbows or anything like that left on this side here. So, yeah, they're really out of ammo. Oh, they've got gunners up on that wall. Okay, that's good. So they've still got some Swiss gunners. They can do some damage. They've got full ammo as well. They, they will be useful. In go the shock, keep chopping them up, boys. There's pikes, they need to make sure they're set up properly. They don't want to get uh, like outflanked or just like get caught out without their uh, without their pikes out. They're already shaken. Attacked in the rear, I guess, because they're retreating. Um, yeah, shock and here losing French Chevaliers. Whether that's because the gunners or just getting outflanked, I'm not really sure. The attackers look like they're running out of ideas. They're running out of men as well. I mean, well, what's it currently at? 3,300 against 2,000 dead. I mean, last time we checked, I feel like the defenders had 2,800. So maybe they're closing the gap. It's still, it's a 1,300 gap. It's certainly, I feel like, closer than it ever has been before. Bar maybe the attack, the, the actual beginning of the attack. <laughs> like this. There you go, pole arms coming in. What was actually the difference at the beginning? Yeah, there's only 400 man difference, so yeah, like, the defenders really took a massive L early on, and they managed to slowly turn it around, especially these bridges here. This is obviously was their plan all along. They had a force on the far side of the bridge, was merely a token force, and this is where they met, were going to plan on holding, and it really is a, a, a grindy-ass siege. But it's an awesome one. It's good to be back with 12-12 sieges. It's been a little while since I've done one, I feel like. It's good to be back. It's, looks like uh, all the players that took part in this one really got stuck in as well. No, neither side really giving any ground. Looks like the um, dismounted... Sorry, not dismounted. The uh, Ducal Heavy Axemen for Lithuania breaking through, though. They might be able to uh, have one last hurrah and break, break, break past this bridge. They're going in against Tier 1 swords as well. So this is right up their street. Tier 1 versus Tier 1. They should beat these Templars. I think Vlad's coming for another charge here. Vlad really likes just charging in. Being involved in some way. Yep, there he is. I mean, he's just recharging his own ally. He's not achieving a lot there. The Templars are losing, but that's because they're just getting minced by these uh, Ducal Heavy Axemen, I think. Oh, that hybrid unit getting killed off. I don't know if the Voynich Archer Spears have actually done great work today. The Swiss uh, Pikes, by the way, nearly dead already. I think that's because of those uh, these Swiss gunners up here, um, which are pretty heavily armoured, actually. Look at them. They've got crossbows. Uh, crossbows. They've got plate armour on. Yeah, they are, they can hit the... You can see with my cursor, you can see that they are hitting the uh, the Pikes. Again, another charge. This is from the Aragons, generally. Just charge the back of his own allied shock infantry again. It didn't really achieve much. And also, he's just charging the Pikes. Like, if he breaks through the, um, the shock line, he just charges into pikes. He lost a lot of men there. It was like 10 men. It's a bit unnecessary. And funnily enough, as there's like a few minutes left, it looks like the defenders are starting to crumble. They're starting to die a little bit. So the shock infantry starting to lose in some areas. Another halberd coming forward here. It's Guard of Scoss. They're charging in their generals, and if they keep charging these generals, it's only a matter of time until they eventually have like a, a silly. Uh, like general being killed. Uh, they've still got one pole on back here, but really all their reserves have been sent forward. Um, what else have we got here? A landstorm. Yeah, dismounted Jeanette. They, yeah, they're really just going to throw everything into this bridge. Also, that's the plan. It's not a bad idea if you lose at the bridge. Or if you lose the bridge, there's no better choke point than that, really. 
The Garda Scots, you can see with their green, white and red feathers. These elite, sh elite shock infantry, elite pole arms is what I meant to say. Elite pole arms going in. It'd be cool if they did have a shock infantry variant. So the pole arms and the uh, archers they have. The Scots, the fight for the French. Yeah, it looks like they uh, are doing just fine, even though they, their formation's kind of a bit, a bit screwed. Looks like they're uh, dealing with those, those Templars pretty handily. The remaining shock down there as well, not doing too much. General, uh, stop charging in general into the back of your men. Look, it's not achieving much. Uh, the charge is absorbed by his own men. So he's really not doing anything. Really does not achieve a lot. Um, if you just set up his general behind there and just use his, like, his morale debuffs or if he has anything like that or like rallies, that would be of more use than just charging the back of your own men. But over on this side, though, we haven't checked it out in a minute. As you can see, nothing really moved. They just keep pouring in infantry. And also looks like Vlad's in here as well. Again, doesn't really do a lot of charging the back of your own men. Uh, they'll probably get the odd kill, but that's it. They're probably losing more, more men than they are actually killing, I'm sure, each charge. There's a good polearm unit here as well. Like, these guys will hold forever. Uh, until they put up their own pole arms, or they just shoot the uh, the enemy. Or uh, until they shoot the pole arm. Yeah, Vlad, stop charging in. Uh, who's, else, who's the other one on this side? Vlad, who else is here? I think this is Aragon's general again. I know this is the, uh, the Welsh general. Smartly enough, the Swiss general is the only one not charging into the back of his own men right now. Like, I mean, if you want to do this with your general, wait until they've actually broken through. Like, this is not the time to do it. I mean, they are sort of doing some damage to the signed arms, but I would be interested to see how many... It's a shame you don't see how many kills, like, you would have, like, inactively inflicted by charging in the back of your own men. I don't think it's friendly fire exactly. But they, like, they break up the formation. They probably do a lot of damage. It's got a Scoss, though, actually. Look like they might break. 88 men, they're like, they're like pulling out of the formation, the fight they're in. Trying to get into another one. Oh, yeah, the town's actually burning a lot as well. Minus one morale at 3%. Oh, that's not a good sign. It's just the wrong time as well. Just when we get into the end game with the siege. And there you go, a draw for the Teutonic Order. It just ended just like that. So, yeah, it did get to the 60-minute timer. And uh, the attackers had not broken through. So I guess the defenders technically had sort of won. Uh, because they held on to their city for 60 minutes. Um, so well done to them. They did a pretty good job. I mean, that's a tough, tough um, siege map to try and fight on. It's like two bridges. And once you take them one half of the uh, city, it's really hard to take the other half with the bridges. Um, yeah, I'm surprised they even put any troops on the other side of the... Uh, like, on the first side, to be honest. Usually, um, some players just defend on one side and that's it they're just really like cruel and just don't even bother to def like they just defend at the bridges often why i like to bring trebuchets um and things like like catapults and stuff because you just burn their city down and then that's a massive morale debuff and then uh and then it makes it much easier to try and take those bridges but it is still really tough i mean obviously um you have a lot of a, a bit of extra money as well to the attackers so that's to try and help because you are expected to take more losses on assaults because you are attacking really tough choke points like bridges. But anyway, yeah, this was sent in by Mo, who was playing as the uh, Teutonic Order. I was about to say the Dutch, the Teutonic Order. That's not right. Um, but yeah, he was taking part in Joe, Joe Onnit's stream. So yeah, you probably guys know Joe Onnit. He's a great Total War YouTuber. There's lots of Rome 2, some 12-12, and Dawnless Days as well, along with other stuff. But yeah, so uh, it was his stream. And it was uh, mainly his subs, I think, that were playing in this one. But yeah, so uh, it was a really good siege. I really did enjoy it. We'll have a quick look at the uh, the kills. We have Mo here. Getting the most kills with his crossbows. 288 here with his um, Pavi's crossbows. Another one getting 238. Um, his gun is getting 112. His swords, yeah, 104, the best one there. His halberds, 121. And his shock infantry getting 125. Then we have Joe playing as the Duchy of Lithuania. Tough faction to play in this one because obviously you're expecting a lot of tier 3 stuff. And this is really a tier 1 heavy faction. But his dismount Brajora did very well. 286 kills, very nice kills there. Retinue archers did get 174, not too shabby at all. His Bohemian crossbows getting 133. The bombard, even though I 
don't often like bringing it. I think it's very expensive and you get the job done with other artillery. Did get 141 kills. It's pretty good. And his mercenary, Ushkaniki, uh, getting 119 kills. Um, I'm going to presume that's how you say it. Then we have Toast playing as the Kingdom of France. Quite a small but elite army I get, he's decided to bring. Um, 110 d uh, kills with the Dismount French Chevaliers. Uh, he got even better with this one. 229. Uh, 125 kills with the sergeants here. 323 kills with the Genoese crossbows in his cav. Did get 141 kills in the end. Didn't think they were going to get much action, but they did get a bit. Then we have Nice Rice playing as the Republic of, v of Venice. I was about to say Republic of Vienna. Republic of Venice. A good faction, really strong infantry. Um, did a really good job, to be honest. 172 kills with them. 133, so yeah, solid kills there. Um... Fancy, he did bring some fancy Damal late. These guys did not do so great. And his crossbows did very well. 265, 217, some good kills there. And his bombard, 105 kills. And then we have um, Inorias playing as um, the uh, Vovoidship of Vlachia. 111 kills with Vlad. Don't really know how many more kills he would have got if he'd just been a bit more patient. He definitely had a few options for better cap charges. His shock infantry, yeah, not doing a lot. These guys with clubs, literal clubs, are not going to do a lot. Um, his infantry, yeah, had a rough time. Um, his only one that really got above 100 was this one here, 128 for his archer spears. He has a uh, Mosneni that got 126. But yeah, really rough time for the Vlachian infantry. And his Hussars getting 78 kills. Then we have Drunk Norwegian playing as the Swiss. Always loves playing as the Swiss as, dr uh, as, the Swiss as drunk. 159 kills with one of his shock infantry. 291 with the other one. Oh my. He still had the uh, elite one as well, the dismounted Jeanette to go in. Um, and then he's... Uh, Got 171 kills with his uh, crossbows here. His gunner's getting 284 kills. Some solid kills there. And he's still had pretty healthy uh, pole arms to go in. Then we have Propane playing as the Crown of Aragon. 140 kill kills with his sergeants. Um, his crossbows then were the only ones that really got any kills. Yeah, infantry really struggled on for the defenders. 125, 100, uh, 111, 233. And then his uh, gunner's here getting 163 kills. Then we have Rosa playing as the Principality of Wales, getting 168 kills with his Dismounted Hospitallers, 255 with another one here, 161 with the uh, Dismounted Hospitallers early, which is like the sword variant, and his Templars, 108 kills, and then his Bowman getting 154 and 141. But as you can see, yeah, like the like the general, I mean, seven kills and he got banged up. He did also get attacked early game, but yeah, it doesn't work. It's not worth charging the back of your own man, it seems. But there you go, guys. That is the day siege battle. I hope you did enjoy that brutal bridge battle. It was an epic one. And well done to all that took part. And well done to the defenders on their victory. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye for now.